Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through what you need to be able to work out a whole series of areas, okay? I'm going to give you six formulas. Of the six, two of them, the two trickier ones, the two weirder ones, are on your formula and data sheet, which leaves four behind that you need to actually remember. Now, thankfully, they're the four that are really quite straightforward. But what's important to me in this lesson is not that you know what the equations are and know that they're right, but that the equations, the formulas actually feel right to you, that you get a vibe for, oh, it's not just a random jumble of letters and numbers. Like say, yeah, okay, that makes sense, right? So here's where we're gonna begin. First diagram, we're gonna draw a rectangle. Okay, so when you have a rectangle, let's just draw one over here. Sorry. When you have a rectangle, right, um, we only need two lengths in a rectangle and we tend to call them breadth and height. So that's a bit of a parallel, isn't it? But anyhow, yes. okay. I've labeled it as a right angle, so it's right angle. By the way, um, you know how. What makes a rectangle a rectangle is that it's got um, right angles everywhere. That in fact is exactly what rectangle means. Um, for example, if you say like to you, yeah, there's a picture on the wall and it's, it's kind of wonky and you say, can you rectify that for me? What you mean is, can you make it right? Okay. Or uh, if there's an error, make it like it's literally, that's where we get the word from, right? So rectangle means a right angle in this context. Okay. Um, now, what do I do if I want to work out the area of this shape if I know the breadth and the height? Yeah, I just multiply. That's it. So, remember I said um, there are four to remember and two that get handed to you. Well, this is one and it's pretty easy and you were all able to recall it just like that. Okay, next one is a parallelogram. So again, let's draw a diagram and let's make sure it's leaning over so you can really tell it's a parallelogram. Your rectangle is like a parallelogram. Yeah, sorry. I'll fix it. Just give me a second. I mean, it's okay. No, I'm getting a bit antsy about it, so it's <laughs> not right. It's because I wasn't standing straight onto the whiteboard when I did it, that's why. That's okay. Uh, thank you, that's very good. Okay. okay, now, what I'm going to do here is it'll be really, really helpful if you have, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see I'm using a couple of colors here. I'm going to use a third one in a second. Okay. Now, on a parallelogram, we also have a B and an H, but they refer to something slightly different. So the B we usually call this base. I mean, it looks like it's in the same spot, but we're calling it a base rather than just how broad it is. Because if I, if I asked you how broad, that's what breadth is, how broad is this parallelogram, you'd probably go all the way from here to there. Yeah, but that's not actually what I want. I just want this side. Okay. Um, the H also stands for something different. So instead of just like one of the sides, you actually need to add in a perpendicular line, right? So this oh, height here, it's actually an abbreviation for the perpendicular height, right? It's like measured at a right angle, that's how tall the thing is. It's just convenient that because a rectangle has right angles everywhere, the height's just on the edge. But in a parallelogram, not the case, okay? So what I want you to see, now it's time to get your other color out, is if you do a slight little rearrangement here, this parallelogram, I want to try and change it so it looks like a rectangle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice off this little triangle bit here. Okay, If I slice that bit off, remembering that what makes a parallelogram a parallelogram is these parallel sides, right? I should be able to grab this part here, the triangle. I'll just shade it in red for you. I should be able to grab it, cut it off, and move it over to the right hand side of the parallelogram, like this. Okay. Now, if I've done that right, and this is all right angles and all that jazz, then having lost the red triangle from over there and put it over here, this shape now is just a rectangle, just like before. So in fact, the formula for the area of a parallelogram is exactly the same, right? Oh. When, when you note, when you note, that here, the lengths of these sides, right? Here the important thing is, this H is not a side. It's not this like leading over side. It's gonna be how tall it is. All right, so I said there were four to remember. Two of them are identical. So this is not so hard. The next one is, anyone wanna give me a suggestion? Okay, now we'll get to a trapezium. Trapezium is actually one of the trickier ones. Um, I, want a, I want a simpler shape. What's a simple shape I still haven't got on here? Square. 
Uh, okay, so I can think about the square, but the square is just a kind of rectangle, so I'm not even going to bother remembering it. I think I heard someone say triangle, so... They're putting solar panels on the roof. Okay, now let's draw a triangle, and um, try not to make it too nice and neat, like as in not like perfect, an isosceles triangle or something like that. Here's my triangle, and just like with the parallelogram, I'm going to put a base and a perpendicular height on it. So I'm going to call this bottom edge the base. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a lot of solar panels. Like, it's really cool. A lot. It's about time we got solar panels. Did you hear about how was that country who put all those solar panels in the Sahara Desert and it's now like the biggest solar panel oh, wow. thing in the world? That's crazy. Now you know who really knows about solar? Um, for people in this class, oh, wow. Germans. They really know about solar. Yeah. Um, in fact, I've got a friend and he's going into photovoltaics, he's an engineer, and um, he's moving to Germany because all of the legit stuff in solar is happening there. In fact, I think they have so much renewable energy. Um, one day recently, they had to pay their citizens to use power because they had so much being generated by... Anyway, That's I digress. so weird. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Like yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Why don't we have that? It's Australia. It's not like really hot here. <laughs> There's lots of reasons why. Okay, Wait, now... He has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Let, have a lot of let's finish and then I'll try and explain. Okay. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, where were we? I'd put a base on. I've also got this perpendicular here so I can have a perpendicular height. Okay, good. Okay, now then the question becomes, well, how do I know? Like, some of you may well be able to quote, <coughs> may be able to quote the formula too, which is great. But again, remember I said to you, I want more than just for you to know the formulas and know that they're right. I want you to feel that they make sense, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. Again, you can't. I want to relate the triangle to the shapes I already know about, okay? So what I'm going to do is take this triangle and I'm going to encase it in a rectangle. So I'm going to draw around it like this. Okay? So you can see I've put a box around my triangle, okay? Now what's great about this box is that because of the way I've drawn it, it has the same breadth, the base and the breadth are the same. It has the same height. Right, so it looks just like this one. In fact, the dimensions are very similar too. But what's brilliant about this is, and I'm sorry if you're starting to run out of colours now, but um, this will make it clearer. I've now got not one triangle, but in fact, because of all the lines I've got, I have four triangles. Four triangles, right? Watch. See how I've got this left-hand part of my original triangle? But do you notice that that part of the triangle exactly matches to this part here? Can you see that? Like they're literally, the word, the fancy word we use is congruent, okay? So those two triangles are congruent, they're the same size, okay? In exactly the same way you look at the right hand side and this triangle here, it also has a twin, right? This part on the outside that I added by making the rectangle, yeah? So now tell me, what's the area of the rectangle I made? It's it's breadth times height, but of course the triangle is just a half of it. Yeah, it makes sense, okay? So that's why this is not just some magical coincidence. It's because the way we work out a triangle is it's exactly half of a rectangle. Is it making sense for you? Are you feeling it? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs>